ago. Yeah, the webinar. And I, I was out of town and now I'm back here to <laughs> just listen in for the questions. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, like this is like very sort of how how to put it very much needed and actual in my life how to how to become first of all embodied and how to be able to stay present. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm one of the persons who so easily I accommodate to how the other person is. Yes. Yeah. And I forget about myself. Yeah. I'm disappearing from myself. Yeah. And I don't know what to do about it because it's like it's like yeah, my attention goes to the other mm -hmm. and I care about the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then then this happens. So you, you might have been kind of resonating pretty much with the distinction between the direct and indirect route, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, this question that you don't know what to do, um, I mean, it sounds so simple, but it's actually not, but it is really, really simple. It is just like you, you just, you know, you have all the tools in your hands now and, um, and what it needs is literally a functional practice you know when when I I, I, I talked about um, have you been there on the call yesterday no yesterday no okay but did you get the link of the recap page so all the different calls they are all signed up uh, uh, uh. yeah I, I must have yeah I'm still going on through the through my inbox so yeah so when you when you just want to have a look there so everything is there so I, I told the story how I came to this um, transformation of this work with a lime in Hawaii <laughs> in a workshop, you know, and and I was just really kind of um, dedicated from day one when I just felt that in my hands, okay, this is what it is, being in action for myself. So using my hands, the inflow, you know, the four different ways of touch. And, you know, let me explain it that way. So, do you know the four different ways of touch? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, you know, the allowing and the... Right, like, like, like in the, you know, um, yeah. but the word allowing and taking and accepting and serving is not a language that people speak generally, you know, it's just like they have a certain association with the word. And I normally explain it that way, you know. When my hand is coming towards you, is my hand doing what I want or is my hand doing what you want? Yeah. yeah. And when you turn that, this is the first two. And then when you turn that around, when your hand is coming towards me or anybody else, is your hand doing what you want or what the other person wants? Yeah. And, yeah. and this piece with the lime, this piece with the object and waking up the hands and the meditation, this is this piece is your hand is doing what you want. And this is the distinction between the direct and indirect route. So I was saying in this Hawaii workshop, now I, I'm getting it what it is. My hand is doing what I want because I was so fixated doing something that this what was coming back from the other person. So the indirect route was the most important piece. So this is what you say. I'm getting lost in the other person's response and I abandon my own capacity to feel, have impulses and be in tune in myself. Yeah. So when I was on this in this workshop in Hawaii, it was just like clicking in like crazy. And I said, everything I've done around sacred sexuality, everything about shamanism, all this kind of stuff, all good. But I'm really, I'm ready to drop that because that's the work that I want to do. So she be became my mentor for six years. And uh, so we have been teaching 25 workshops together or so. And in the beginning, she said, if you want to, if you want to give it, yeah. So if I want to teach it, if you want to give it first, you have to receive it. So that means it's just like, I have to go fully all the way in to this structure of being in action for myself. And the way how she did that, and just want to say quickly hello. Hi, please feel welcome to uh, open up your camera and your microphone. We have a normal conversation here, so it's not a 
sales call or not a webinar or not a challenge or anything. We just have a conversation. So, she, uh, and uh, she said, the easiest way to really receive it first before you can give it, you have to play with a hundred people the three minute game. And that's, that's, that's all what it is, you know. There's not a big secret behind it when you actually start embodying that. So the embodiment of you do what you want and you have the sensory inflow open, you need a few hundred people or a few hundred opportunities that you practice that. And every time you do that, you will learn something more about yourself and the other person. And the difficulties by doing that is when you are on your own and you come in connection with your self-doubt, with your, with your values, with your conditionings, with everything, belief system that has been put on top of our capacity to feel. And that's literally the offer of the academy and everything that I'm doing. Just like, hey, I have been six years through that thing. I've, I had, I don't know, altogether over 50 workshops that I've been teaching to thousands of people around the world. I had probably a thousand uh, three-minute game sessions and I know what comes up in me still doing it for so long because this is a lifelong never-ending process because you go deeper and deeper and deeper into embodiment. But I learned so much about other people where they struggle and have the difficulties with. And that's where I can help everyone. Just like, this is what is coming up. Hi, Annika, it's you. <laughs> Good seeing you. <laughs> So, so kind of dealing with that, what is coming up and then being attuned and giving the right directions, you know, knowing what helps and what doesn't. And as well, sharing feelings that are um, uncommon with other people who are struggling with the same thing. And then you are in a group of people like we here, just like, and coming together sometimes we are just on the on the calls just four people sometimes we are 20 and then when one person is sharing something about their experiences you know the, the penny drops oh this is what it is and it goes super fast so you accelerate your capacity that's actually really nice so that's the answer of when you're getting lost where you can find yourself back to, to hear you and yeah, welcome. I understand a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you know already from this entire structure, right? So so you have done some 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 work around it. But I'm still very curious, always. <laughs> you have a question? Mm -hmm. Do you have a question? No, not at the moment, but maybe yeah, we will see. Yeah, it will come up whenever you have a question. You're welcome. Does that make uh, sense? Tada was explaining. Yeah. yeah, so basically I, I think, yeah, so if I heard you correct, like we need people to practice with. Yes. Which are like, so I need like a permission from the other one to practice and rehearse. Yeah. Yes. So this is not maybe something to just dive in with some, another person just to interact because then the mess happens. Yeah, people who, people who don't understand that when you come from that perspective of the inflow versus the indirect route, so what is coming back, and people don't have that embodied and really understood what the inflow is, they defend literally their, their behavior of the indirect route and you end up in discussions that are just going nowhere. You know? yeah. And uh, you know, the interesting thing is when, when you have, for example, done the hand, the hand exercise and you um, have have you been in one of the calls? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So so you might have heard the way how I do that is very repetitive. Yeah. I say kind of you just I just do it right now. I have something in my hands and feel it. So the way how I say that is is a very repetitive form by intention so that that you know what to look for. You know, you just actually get the tactile information, temperature and softness and and then how to find it. And when when I see people finding it, something is dropping, it clicks in and then the nervous system makes this <sighs> yeah. And then people are not kind of trying to figure something out. That there's all of a sudden something is relaxing in them and something is getting soft 
And it's not only that I can see that, I can feel that. So I just, I, I kind of know what the, what the communication way is to guide people into that. And when you hear that a few times, 10, 15, 20 times or something, and you choose to be with a person and want to show that, then you know what to look for. Then you, sh then you know how to do it. And then you know before somebody else is doing with their hand towards you what they want, they have that in place first. And then you know how to show them how to get that in place. And I'd like to say from that perspective, from, you know, I love to label it as, as empowerment. This is embodied empowerment. So that when you have this embodied and you are empowered because you know what people normally do and you're not willing to keep up with that anymore, then you can empower people from an embodied place and not from a rational structure of an understanding. And that makes it so easy. That makes, that, 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 that makes a difference in so many directions. So, I mean, I'm, I'm in, the, in the fortune, uh, um, like Annika as well, we are just as facilitator on festivals, we have the, the, the um, advantage that we have a room of, I don't know, 50, 100 people or so, and then going through the structure, and uh, we can experiment and um, uh, test different things that work, you know. And I've, I've you know, the festivals, they are always kind of my go-to to experiment and play with new dynamics and let people find it. You know, it's a common thing when I have a room of 100 people, you know, normally people, I would say, 20, 30% leaving during a workshop because they have not the capacity to dive into that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and in my, in my earlier stages of facilitation and teaching, I was just thinking, oh my God, I'm doing something wrong. Or just like, oh my God, I have said something wrong. Or, or and, and I, I took it kind of personally when people leaving. But now in the first place, I understand either somebody's totally embodied and empowered and they have the choice and they go because something is not resonating. So it's nothing personal. But then the people who are leaving, they're most of the time bored. Yeah, they can't get the essence of it. So what happens is when you start feeling it, and that's, I would say, probably 80% of men the case, when you start feeling it and you are in action and so your hand is doing what you want and you're not touching anybody else, you're just touching an object and you have the, the inflow and the motor in connection and you engage the feeling center, Everybody is coming to this um, pleasure ceiling, you know, where the obstacles are, why it doesn't feel good and why they stop and why they don't do it and why they can't really get it, why it's not clicking in the nervous system. And I have, I have experienced that on my own and I call that the desert of boredom. And when this pleasure ceiling of boredom kicks in, and most of the time for men, because most men, they are so, um, let's say, goal-driven in gratification when it comes to sensual and sexual encounter. And the goal-driven dynamic in their nervous system is dopamine-based. And dopamine-based, goal-driven encounter um, creates an internal loop, an internal understanding of, oh, that feels good, I want more. Yeah, so they always look for, an, for another kick, for another hype. But when you turn that around into the oxytocin way, so the feeling and the sensing way, you have not the dopamine pathway in your nervous system, you have the so-called serotonin pathway in your nervous system. And that is creating contentment and happiness and the internalized experience of that in your nervous system on an emotional level is, oh, that feels good, I'm happy with what is. Do you know the two differences? Yes. Yeah. And, but most men who don't have this 
serotonin oxytocin pathway, so the contentment and happiness and relaxation, there is between this level of, oh, it is good as it is, and oh my God, I just need more, there is this gap in between. Yeah? And this gap in between, the lack between serotonin and dopamine is the mix, the, 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 the right mix of sensual pleasure that is oxytocin based that has not a goal. And this gap in between, this is what I call the desert of boredom because it doesn't allow people to sink into that and this is where people have difficulties. And they are literally, I wouldn't say doomed, but most people, this is where the, where the really heaviness is happening in their life, where they're nearly dependent on the outcome what comes back from the other person when they do something. And when they're not getting the right um, energy back, they think they do something wrong, or even worse, they think they are wrong. That's the guilt, shame, fear trip that is happening in most people. Because they don't want to feel that, they leave or they argue. Yeah. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Sound familiar, Res right? Resolution of the touch is too coarse. Like they don't have the like. Yeah, you know, on the bigger picture, and that's that's my idea with um, what I create with this academy is that you know we just come together, creating a group of people as a like a hub, yeah. And it needs a, a group of normally three, four, five people who are getting it e emotionally. And when there's a little group of people, it's when we invite other people into that, it's so much easier for other people to find. So if you have somebody else who struggles with that, and, and you say, okay, I cannot show you because as an individual, or I have not enough knowledge, I have not enough experiences, I have not enough you know, know how, but just come into that group and see how we do that. Just just learn it for yourself and then you play the three minute game together. That makes so much difference. Yeah, because for me it's like I lack people. I don't have just practice partners or yeah. <laughs> like so that stays in the limited yeah. 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 Truly. But I, I so understand what you are saying because yeah. this like what I feel is like there's just like a total mismatch with me and the other one who is goal oriented. Yes. And I'm just saying I don't want to go there. It's like I'm shutting down. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, because I, I can like I can stay. I would love to say I could stay hours with just like somebody just holding his hand in my skin or something. Yeah. And I can feel it. Yeah. And I don't know. Would you be willing to say wor a word or two? Like, how would I make that clear to the other one? Like, how how can I make myself clear to the yeah. other one that I just how to make them understand that I don't work that way? Yeah, you know. The, the, so first of all, I want to let you know that you are not alone with that. Yeah. So most people have this have the same same dynamics going on and I, I I have or I had and I still have them to a degree and when somebody is touching me who has not this embodiment of this structure in their nervous system somebody's touching me my nervous system goes like just like you, you put lime on an oyster it's just like oh, it's just like don't, don't touch you take your hand so I feel that immediately and um, and the tendency and I, and I guess we are speaking the same language there, is that we're going along with what is happening. Yes. Yeah, so we're letting it happen because we don't want to disappoint the other person. And it's better getting something, even if it's not that good, as not getting anything. Exactly. Yeah. And what that is, it comes together with the dynamics of kind of being the good girl, being the good boy, the kind of pleasing, appeasing, you know, being a oppressed as a little child trying to making it right for mommy and daddy and then building our personality up on that and it's hard to say no mm. it's difficult because to it's say better no. than nothing. It's, it's better than no touch at the wall right it's just getting that is better than getting than, than not getting anything and how to bridge that is in the first place 
because this part of touch that we all need and that we want to feel from other people when they can feel themselves is literally the most nourishing and the best touch that we can have and getting that in our body in our nervous system this is like a, it's a holiday yeah. when somebody knows how to touch and they touch me it's just like here have my body i don't i totally feel you can feel me all, all is good you know <laughs> and and when there's no agenda involved um when you want to receive that in, in the first place when you know how to find it in the first place so if that is your reference point if that's your default and you start playing with a person the first thing that what you do is before you let somebody else touching you the way how they want is you actually ask if you can touch them the way how you want so and not only using your hands just asking hey do i have access to your body to your skin for about 10 minutes or something like that can i feel myself on you what is your limit what is it that i can't do and when you have that as a reference point in your hands and you have enough practice and you're really confident with that then you can easily use your body on somebody else and you have your stuff coming up what's totally fine because it's part of the experience but then um, when you know you have kind of a back up you know group of people who can just like tell you this is exactly what is happening and you need to be prepared when that comes up that you have to you know confident with your feelings when they come up you know the shame thing or just like now they think I'm a pervert or um, but the receiving part is the most important piece you need to learn to receive while you're in action and if you just reach this point where you say okay this is how far I can go so when you reach that point you can always go to the next step and t tell the person I want you to touch me on this part on my body in this and that way for five minutes and in no other way can you do that don't do anything else than exactly that that can you please reconfirm what I have just said that I know you do what I want you to do yeah so you still stay on the receiving side and you don't have to teach anything to anybody you can just be selfish and allow yourself to receiving because that what gets you away from the pleasing dynamic of trying to go along and making it nice yeah and and I, I would put that in the category of um, uh, radical self-responsibility yeah. yeah. and and to come to radical self-responsibility there are steps you know I, I've, I've in the book I have um, this one of my other teacher mentors Clinton Callahan he called that the um, the responsibility map where you go from no responsibility to a childish responsibility to an adult responsibility to high responsibility till you arrive in radical responsibility where you literally don't compromise anymore you say just like somebody touches you you you, you, you can see feel smell people who you know who have no idea what they do and you don't even let them close anymore or you see people you feel people just like because people who have that in their body they are relaxed you can sense them and you feel naturally drawn closer to people like that you start to attracting them because your radiance is vibrating on a different level because your nervous system your body your feelings your emotions they know and and it it, it flips so much in the nervous system it's, it's actually phenomenal does it make sense? I'm saying. I see you both nodding. <laughs> um, so, you, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, can you just, yeah, paint a picture? How does it look like when two people are with each other and they both are radically self-responsible? Um, um, no have you been, have you been or felt contact improvisation? I know what it is. Yeah, I haven't done it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, because yeah. when, when two it's like this, there's usually this like yeah, my mom goes into this back and forth. I have to do this and do this. No, 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 no. This is not what it is. So the four yeah. ways of touch, they are just the the playground of experiencing it. Yeah. yeah. 
and in any given moment you have like a you know let's say the four ways of touch is your is your uh, compass yeah yeah which which of the four directions is it going to happen and underneath that compass let's say there is a, a landing net and that landing net is you can always fall back into the inflow so if you're getting lost in something who is doing what and where and whom you always can come back to yourself ex to, to your experience to your body to yourself yeah because going in the shadows and going along with somebody does doesn't work anymore and the thing is when you know you can't pretend to yourself that you don't know because when you know you can literally just like pull the handbrake and just like okay let us pause you for a moment I just need to revisit something yeah. you, you get out of the situation you don't keep up with stuff anymore and you know th the thing is when this is all in place you don't go to the shadows you have your self-love so your inflow in place you know the four different ways of touch and then you go to this place of where you mutual engage, where you mutual feel each other at the same time. This is what I call this apex, you know, the interpersonal place of love and care. And I have been in a, in, I was in Bali years ago. I got invited from a contact improvisation facilitator to a workshop um, being asked that sometimes people in the workshop accusing other people of abusers because there are people touching with an agenda and they're feeling violated. And I said, well, you know, what can you do? <laughs> There's not much st stuff to do. It's just like this is how it is. The point is, and this is really, really crucial, people are not by intention bad or evil. Mm -hmm. Some people just simply don't know and they have no reference points in their body. Yeah. So what happens is when somebody else is more from a sensual place is more sensitive is more has more subtle frequency in their body they can sense people when they have an agenda immediately but if they put themselves into this enduring position into the you know going along or even victimizing themselves it's just like poor me what happens is through their own position they're putting themselves in they putting the other person automatically in the perpetrator position. Yeah. It's it, there's, there's there's no way there's no, no 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 way that this is not happening. So important here is that from a position of you know where your limits are, you know where your boundaries are, and when you in this place of empowerment. Um, uh, and you know really true embodiment um, you become trustworthy to yourself when that is happening and you don't go along anymore just like say just stop here pause just, just let's have a cup of tea mm -hmm. yeah and and you know and the, the great thing is that there's definitely a way out so when two people play you know and they start sensually and you know both are in action and they do it both for themselves it has nothing to do with the four ways of touch anymore there's another component on top of that and this component is this this apex place I'm talking about but the better we're getting into the the inflow and playing the three-minute game the better we get into this apex dynamic and the better we get in the apex dynamic the more we can literally guide other people into the place and sometimes you just play for hours you know you can, I, I can play for 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 a long long time and you know and when i reach my pleasure ceiling i just i, I need a break so okay this is, so i i noticed oh but i should do more because the person still want more and then i go into as well i just provide and give and do something and then I start abandoning my little impulses, saying just like, no, 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 I don't. I'm, I'm saturated. I had enough. I'm good. You know, probably I just need to have a glass of orange juice and need to get out and have some sunshine or some ground on my feet, under my feet, and <laughs> feeling myself. And um, because if I stop then, uh, if I don't stop then, and I continue, 
you know, when I put myself into the pleasing position or I'm just doing something to make the other person feel good, I put automatically the other person in kind of the um, exploiter position. So I, I think I, I, I have to give them and they suck me out, you know. And, and you know, this is the beautiful thing so that this interpersonal place, this love and care, this apex place functions either till we just merge all into unity and you know one is consciousness or we just stop or we're dropping back into the shadows <laughs> but the beautiful thing is to know when we do that and then being just aware of it yeah thank you for that Yeah, that apex dynamics and flow sounds so, so delicious. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually really is. It's, it's, I mean, this is the, the best and everybody knows that, you know, just like this is, this is where the good stuff is happening. And, and um, wouldn't you like to have more of that? You know, it's not like you found it once and then you're just solved forever. No, when you found it and you know how to find it, then the real stuff is happening. Uh, and then, then it becomes a spiritual journey. Mm. Yeah, I truly can believe that, yeah. yeah. So many people think, so what's the point of the waking up the hands and playing the three minute games? It's like, well, you know, I, you know, I cannot pressure or force people into their happiness. <laughs> they will have to find that themselves. And um, I can only make the invitation and be the guide. And with a handful of people who had a similar experience, it becomes extremely enriching. Hmm. How about you? Do you have anything? It's just nice to, to listen to it and refresh my mind. Yeah, this is yeah, really true. And I wonder when I, I did this for the first time, uh, because I jumped into a challenge we had after a festival for, I think it was 30 days or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's opened up like a new journey, really, mm. to, to yeah, feel more and uh, open up with something new. So I'm very thankful for that. Mm. Yeah. How long is that ago? That must have been the 30-day challenge, probably two years ago or something, right? Or three years um, even? Three years, I think, or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, so uh, I really like your job. Yeah. What what has been changing for you after three years? So so, or or, or where is your obstacle, your difficulty still? Mm. It's more like you know when you start to do the meditation. After a while, you can immediately jump into that place. Mm -hmm. And is it? And this is the same for me. Like I, I can take something and start to touch myself or yeah something and. I, I immediately come back to myself mm -hmm. and, and feel the energy start to flow and yes, it's amazing. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, yeah, my experience as well in the very beginning when I started that, that kind of my, my attention span to keep my awareness on the sensation, on the inflow, I think was probably 30 seconds or so. Yeah. And then and then I noticed I kind of just, my mind was drifting and I went back in thought yeah. forms and patterns and then, um, and then calling myself back into the experience. And when, when people say, for example, um, oh my God, Matt has so much present in his hands when he's touching, um, what it does is I could literally expand my attention span from 30 seconds to now I can keep my awareness in my sensation in my hands all the time. Yeah. 
and in the beginning and i shared that as well in the in the challenge saying just like yeah so you know we just say you just lean back you just relax you put a cushion cushion on your lap and then you sit there and hold an object and then you feel yourself and then so it looks a little bit dull after a while um, but this is just um, it's just the beginning of finding it it's just the beginning just like this is how you find it you know you need to relax your spine relax your shoulders because these nerves you know the the vagus nerve activity and the sensory inflow and everything is just not working when we go fast or when we actually are tensed up or when we just contract it you know, and therefore just like no no you have to relax first a little bit and when you then find it you release oxytocin and then you relax a little bit more and when you do that for three to five minutes through the um, release of the neurotransmitter you create new pathways and um, and that guides literally you know when the pathways exist it's just like train a muscle yeah when you have the muscle working then you can build on that muscle and that's that's what it is and um, yeah after doing it for three years it's just like you know people think kind of just like no it's just like I'm too old or no that's uh, I w would have liked to know that when I was in school or a teenager it's just like no you don't miss out on this opportunity here because you know I've I promise you know I turned every stone around that I could find on my spiritual search and on my kind of self-development search this is the opportunity do it now because there's no other way there's no way around that it is not there are probably other people doing it too yeah I mean maybe maybe there are people who doesn't resonate with me as a person who doesn't resonate with what I'm doing and how I'm doing it but that as an opportunity there's no other way to get that in the body that's it's a it's a blessing and a curse <laughs> and it's also like a big opportunity to expand the box of like pleasure and uh, explore that with yourself also and I also think it's a good way to, to resource because sometimes it's, it's hard to, for me, it's hard to stand still with what I, what's going on and I feel, oh, is something going on? And then this uh, can, uh, meditation can help me to also release yeah. if it's something who wants to release yeah. if I'm sad or angry or yeah, something. Yeah. Really helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. In my daily life. <laughs> it's so interesting. I was just talking with a with a friend of mine in Bali, um, and uh, she's into that work since uh, we know since 2017 or so. So she has been going all the way through, and um, she just actually recognized the other day sitting as a as a dentist that when she's taking something in her hand, doing it in the waiting room, that she could literally relax. And then she created like little plastic kind of things and wrote it in and gave it to the dentist. So now, now there's a, a card of what to do to relax the nervous system and hold something in your hands. And um, uh, yeah, it, you know, it's just like it, there's, there, there's so many ways of actually using it. So for example, when I'm on a call or on a talk, you know, I just have something in my hands. Or even when I'm, <laughs> when I'm at the festival, you know, it's just like, I just have my glass in my hands and, and, and I make this connection and I have that constantly activated. And it just, it just helps me totally. Um, yeah, so there's some magic behind that. Kind of holding that torch in the hand, just like, this is where you find it. This is how you get it. It's a, it's a good thing. Hmm. Okay, do you have any other questions, Tanya or Annika? I'm still exploring because I was with you in the in the first day and I have listened afterwards for these five days and the first question was what will what what do I do when I hold back my impulses? I still like looking a little bit more into that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
So, so what, what do you mean the question is why don't you ask for what you want and what are you doing instead? Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Hmm. This is this is a big question, right? Yeah, really big. <laughs> yeah. Many layers. Yeah. Of course, it's not new, but. I think I shut down a little bit and uh, don't I shine, shine a little bit uh, less. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. make my, myself a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing about shyness is just like, you know, I'm getting more confident being shy. <laughs> But I'm getting more shy because my shyness comes more through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a good, that's a good one. It's <laughs> and, then, and then there are all this awkward situation where I just, when I'm so shy, I actually don't know what to do and what to say. You know, and then you just, you just look around, just like, hmm. <laughs> And, and 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 then in my way there comes this kind of the the, the hiding kind of thing coming in. Oh, I just want to run away, or just like want to, you know, I've 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 done that in calls intentionally, for example. Um, kind of when the when when the gap is happening and nothing is being said, and then the awkward moment comes into the room, and then just like okay, everybody feels that awkwardness right now. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. So let's be in that awkwardness. Yeah. How does it feel? What do you want to do with it? You want to run, you want to switch off, you just have something better to do. Yeah. So so so, so getting comf comfortable confident with the discomfort. That's 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 one of the biggest um, achievements through that work that I can say. So not being afraid of being afraid and um, facing the challenges um, that keeps me away of facing a challenge. Uh, that's, uh, that's one of the biggest achievements that I that I could find. And and as I said that as well in workshops or in situations, just like no, you think kind of me standing here in front of people, I'm the cool dude, and I have it all together. It's just like no, you know. Uh, when you when you do that, it's just like it's getting worse. You're getting more fragile. You're getting more vulnerable. You're getting more insecure, and you're getting more shy. But you know who cares? <laughs> you can just be with yourself. You it's just, you hold yourself in whatever comes up. And even like you said, Tanya, when there's a situation, and then you don't want to go along, and you say to somebody, you know, this part of. If I tell them to stop, then how can I say that without them being felt made wrong? Mm -hmm. How can I deliver a message that still acknowledge them as an individual without being on the finger pointing and saying this is this is this is kind of not which is not good what you're doing, but actually owing just like, okay, this is not working for me. I just need, to, I need to pause here. I need to maybe have a, have a break or I, I need to breathe or I need to feel back in my body or, um, and just trusting these impulses. Yeah. As I said, you just uh, uh, notice, trust, value and communicate on the giving and on the receiving side. Yeah, and I really like what you said about the having like a courage to be mm. uncertain or unsure. First of all, recognizing it in yourself, but then why not even just speaking up? Mm -hmm. Like just saying, I mean, I'm really like, you know, not knowing what to do or mm -hmm. and just like giving room to that uncertainty mm -hmm. and becoming friends with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those, those parts. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so had a question? It was just like no, about I just want to say <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, and I take with me because I jump into some thing 
this this auto when I think I'm gonna be a little bit scared or something and I take this exercise with me I think uh, yeah I saw something new like oh this is good for me to, yeah. to take something in my hand and yeah, yeah start yeah. like that yeah, I just, yeah, I just, just want to say, just like again, um, to the academy. I mean, the word academy sounds pretty big, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what I have started with is, you know, two years ago, was, uh, I, I had this Facebook group, Somatic Consent. And there were 4,000 people in there. And, and then I understood that Facebook in itself is, is not a platform to provide a space for people having experience. Facebook is a company that uses people as their product. So we are products of Facebook. And there was this loud, noisy thing going on. And there was always this kind of uh, advertising and posting and distraction. Uh, you know, it's like the Facebook addiction, literally. And then I said, it's like, uh, I don't want to be um, a product of a um, multi-billion dollar algorithm company. And I'm still doing it, I'm still posting there and I'm still doing stuff, but that was the idea going away from Facebook and created that platform on Mighty Network. And, and it's literally a closed platform where people from the outside cannot come in except they have permission. Yeah. And as soon people are in all everything that I'm providing, so the Zoom calls and the um, the groups and the online course and the the consent lab, so everything is in one place, and it's quiet. You know, you don't have this noise of social media platforms. It's a closed environment. I've done my year training on that platform. I have done coaching programs on that platform, and. Uh, you know, or the other ambassadors of somatic consent, they have their own little space there. And if they want to engage with their groups they have and they want to go away from Facebook, you know, they do that in the space there. They have their own space that they can use. And, you know, it's spacious, it's easy, everybody knows where what is, and, um, and it's, a, it's an easy event uh, calendar. You know, there are these three events is the uh, the uh, weekly call, 90 minutes, is similar like that what we do here. So a group of people and we just have a conversation from the level of experiences. And then um, there's another one, it's uh, on uh, Wednesday. So just 15 minutes waking up their hands together in a group. And then once a month the consent lab online where we actually start to engage and play with the dynamics of asking the questions, may I and will you? And that's really fun. The online consent level this is one of my, one of my babies. I really love. And uh, so, 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 but everything is in one place, and um, and just people can use it easily. So that's the that's the main idea. So academy is you know it's not the university with long kind of <laughs> walkways and rooms, and but it's a, it's a it's a nice nice platform that's private, and that's that's what I love. So it's 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 for for transformative, intimate work is, is a perfect environment. And, um, and, and it's, you know, safety is relative, but it's safe to meet there because there are no disturbance. There are no, um, um, how, how do you call that, orcs or trolls running around and, and uh, trying to interfere in anything. And, and it's, it's solid. So that's what I love. So, I don't want to sell you anything. If you want to check it out, you know what we do. Um, you can either, so there's a, a three-day free thing um, if you want to have a look. So just like sign up and have a look what this place has to offer. And if it's resonating with you, then um, you sign out and then you just like take this um, um, well, well, the thing is, when you when you sign up, it comes with a subscription, and that subscription is ninety euro per month or something like that. And you can just go out whenever you want to, yeah. uh, or you just like have this one-time 
payment, this 400 euro, and then you just have access to everything, including the online course, because the online course is not in the 90 euro description included. But if you just want to get this 90 euro description, you just sign in once, get the, euro, uh, the 90 euro description set up, and then you have, I think, seven days at the moment, seven days for free just to check it out. Just have a look. What's going on? What's in there? Do you resonate with that? And if you don't resonate, you just can leave at any time. And um, so that people have the choice of using the space for themselves. All righty. Sounds good. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. If you are interested, please send me a link. Uh, uh, send me a message. I send you a link. And I said, just like here, just look it up. Um, you're more than welcome to join. And um, it's, it's not overcrowded at the moment. We are about 60 people. And, um, and you know, it has an individual set, a, a chat message so people can chat with each other. It's this chat room, um, a, a group chat where everybody can chat with everybody. And um, yeah, it's a lovely place. I, I really love it. So check it out. OK. Thank you Thank for you. joining and asking questions and letting me talk so much. <laughs> I hope you just got something out of it. Yeah, thank you. Yes, very much. Thank you for what you do. And oh, you're welcome. We go back to the resource place later. Yes. Yeah. yeah. OK, enjoy your weekend. And uh, yeah. I might see you there. Yeah. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>